Hi, everybody. This is Lisa Haven, and I've got um, a very interesting topic that I want to share with you. And this one is on chemtrails and mind control, proof from government documentation. Some of you may be familiar with this um, HR 2977, and some of you may not be. Uh, that being the case, I want to bring it to everybody's attention because I believe it's imperative. And it bugs me when people say that these things don't exist, they're not real, yet we have high government officials talking about chemtrails. We have military personnel uh, talking about chemtrails. And I personally know um, someone from the uh, Air Force who told us one day that they were going to spray chemtrails on the population and they were actually infusing it with a particular flu virus to study the effects on the population and we were told to stay inside that day. Uh, whether or not you want to believe me, and that was coming from a friend who knew the man, but um, nonetheless, whether you want to believe me or not is completely up to you, but I am going to prove to you through the government's documentation that this is legit. Okay, so let me show you the link because that's, I believe, important. Notice it's on a government website, FAS.org, Congress, and this was in 2001 for um, House Resolution 2977. I am going to leave that link at the bottom for you because I believe it's imperative for you to check it out yourself. All right, so let's get into this. Um, the reason this um, HR 2977 was put together was to preserve the cooperative, peaceful uses of space for the benefit of all humankind by permanently prohibiting the, the basing of weapon in space by the U.S. and to require the president to take action to adopt and implement a world treaty New World Order, does that make sense? Anyway, banning space-based weapons. So they're trying to prevent um, any country, including ourselves, making a sort of world peace treaty uh, in the name of space freedom, <laughs> where no weapons are allowed to be formed in space. Okay, so that's what this, this uh, HR 2977 is about. In doing so, they admit and openly admit uh, some of the possible space weapons that can go up or some of the weapons that can go in the skies, such as chemtrails, mind control, um, uh, frequency, um, radio waves, and the, and the nature. And, and I'm going to show you because it is a legit thing. Now, um, the bill was introduced by Mr. Kochinch, um in 2001 of October 2nd, and it was referred to the Committee on Science. Um, so there's that, but let's go ahead and move on. Okay, here's a repeat of what I just read, but it is to be enacted by the state and house representative of the United States of America Congress. Um, this act may be entitled as the Space Preservation Act of 2001. So if you want to Google it, that is the name you're going to look for, Space Preservation Act of 2001. Okay, so here it just says that they want to enact this um, bill, if you will, in order for peace purposes, and they want to permanently ban, you know, the weapons in space. That's what that section's on. Okay, so here in section four, the president shall direct the United States representative to the UN and other international organizations to immediately work towards negotiating, adopting, and implementing a world agreement banning space-based weapons. Okay, so that just goes on. And it just reiterates what I told you the documentation was about. Section five just kind of reiterates it. And section six, um, it just lists that nothing in this act may be constructed as prohibiting the use of funds for. In other words, they can still continue to do space exploration, research and development, testing, manufacturing, um, civil, commercial, or defense activities, um, commercial or defense activities, um, navigation, surveillance, and the like. So all this stuff is okay. Notice the word surveillance. You know, they tell us that they don't uh, monitor what you're doing from space, yet here it's listed as an acceptable act that may be done from space. Just something to think about. Are they admitting that they do surveillance from space? I would imagine that's a yes. 
And uh, most of us know that that is the case. Let's go on to section seven. Okay, so it goes on to, sorry, define what space is. Um, space means anything above or greater than 60 kilometers above the surface of the earth or any celestial body in space. So some of our air, some of, and obviously space. The term weapon describes a device capable of the following. So here's what it's, um, the weapons that they want to ban, if you will. Uh, damaging or destroying an object those kinds of things, firing one or more projectiles, detonating one or more devices, directing a source of energy. Huh. Why would they list directing a source of energy if it wasn't possible? And he gives us um, a list, and it says including molecular or atomic energy, subatomic particle beams, electromagnetic radiation. And I did a post on this electromagnetic radiation the other day, and that was proved uh, to cause some of the humming in people's ears. So this electromagnetic radiation is a bad thing, and this is what they're using. Anyhow, uh, plasma, ELF, or extreme low frequency, ultra low frequency, and energy radiation against that object, or any acknowledged or as yet developed means. So this is their idea of a weapon according to section seven. So they define space and they define weapon as all these things. The reason that they have to define weapon as these things is because they do indeed exist. This is them admitting that all these things right here actually are real. Okay, but let's go on. Um, and it says anything that inflicts death or injury or um, destroys a person or the biological life, health, uh, mental health, mental health, or physical and economical well-being of a person that is also a type of weapon uh, through the use of any means described in paragraph B. So let's go there now. Okay, through the use of land-based, sea-based, or space-based systems using radiation, electromagnetic, psychotronic, sonic, laser, or other energies directed at an individual person or targeted populations for the purpose of information war, mood management, or mind control of such persons of the populations. Okay, stop right there. In other words, if a weapon can be used for mind control, if a weapon can can be a psychotronic weapon where they're controlling your feelings, your emotions, your things like that, um, then that would say that these weapons do indeed exist. Now, mind you, they're trying to quote unquote make a world treaty where they're not using these things, yet I believe they are and under the radar, just like everything else they try to push. The USA doesn't want anybody to use it, but yet all those countries who, who, you know, would sign a treaty like this still continue to use these things on the population. But what upsets me is people don't think these things are real, yet here it is in a government document, House Resolution 2977, back in 2001 when this document was created, might I add, that they're admitting to weapons such as mind control, mood management, Okay, these are, you can change the mood of a crowd. These are the kind of things that I'm talking about. And I did a post about it the other day um, about psychotropic weapons, and I'll leave a link. But um, these things we need to keep in mind are real and legit. Okay, so let's move on. By expelling, and this is another weapon, by expelling chemical or biological agents in the vicinity of a person. Such terms include exotic systems such as, so here's the exotic weapon systems again, okay, and this is your chemtrail information, it, and it says electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons, chemtrails, huh, there's your chemtrails, here's, a, here's another thing just to add to that, is they continue to shoot chemtrails in our sky, all while trying to promote this fake a uh, world treaty where they're not using it yet. I see chemtrails in my sky uh, at least 20 times a month. Um, that's what they're doing. And they're listing chemtrail under weapons. Why would they list a chemtrail under a weapon? You need to ask yourself that question. I mean, think about it. They list it as a weapon 
but people think they're not emitting anything from it. Why would chemtrail be listed as a weapon? Why would it? You have to think about that. That's your 100% proof that chemtrails are, are, are being used as weapons and they're putting stuff in the chemtrails that's making people sick or that's dumbing down the population, kind of like the fluoride in the water. Uh, chemtrails is similar to that and they've got aluminum and other things, mind you, but here it's listed as a weapon. And, and let me just go back up to show you it's listed under weapons. Let's find the subtitle, okay? So just deal with me while the thing looks funky because I don't, I don't want to, um, here, see definitions, okay? And here's definition of what? The term weapon. And this whole time we're under this weapon category. Here's, here's one, okay? Do, do, do. So excuse the screen, like I said. And here's section B of under weapons, because now we're talking about exotic weapons, okay? And we've got chemtrails. That's your proof. And if you want to be crazy and say, oh, that's not what they're proving, you can't do that with this. There's no way to rebuttal or fight against that. It's listed as a weapon, therefore, we can assume it is being used as a weapon. Although they're trying to stop it worldwide, which is a bunch of... I think false lies anyway. Um, so let's go on because this is just going to upset me. Um, high altitude, ultra low, low frequency weapon systems. Huh. Huh. There's low frequency weapons. Might be why you're hearing low hums in the ears. A, a lot of people across the country. Um, plasma, electromagnetic, sonic or ultrasonic weapons. Laser weapon systems, strategic, theater, tactical, or extraterrestrial weapons. Huh. Where do they get the extraterrestrial weapons from? Maybe because they are getting technology from another source. Just a thought. Um, it goes on. Chemical, biological, environmental, climate, or tectonic weapons. Um, Think about this, a climate weapon. Can you think of a climate or tectonic weapon? Just sit on that for a moment. Harp, huh. Here they are admitting basically without putting the word harp that there are climate weapons. And I believe harp is obviously part of that. Okay, but let's go on. The term exotic weapons system includes weapons designed to damage space or natural ecosystems or climate or weather or tectonic systems with the purpose of inducing damage or destruction upon a targeted population or region on the earth or in space. There's your harp. Harp exists. Harp is real. There's your proof. Okay, now I want to take you to another document. And let me click over there. Here we are. And this is a resolution that was actually done by Fairfax, uh, designated in the town as a chem trail free zone. Okay, and this can be found at the town of Fairfax. Okay, I'm going to show you the link. Check it out. Townoffairfax.org. And this is part of their information. This is a legit document. You cannot call it unlegit. You can order it from the town of Fairfax. This is what they've done. A typical chemtrail appear, appears as a white line in the sky. These lines become diffused as they float heavy down to earth. Heavy spraying creates a thick haze over the vast area. Often in certain areas of the country, you will see grid patterns in the sky formed by chemtrails. I often see X patterns. Um, if you watch closely, you will see that these white lines in the sky come from passing jet airplanes. The fact that these exhausts persist means that they are of particular matter. Contrails are unadulterated and typically disappear within two minutes, while chemtrails linger for hours. That's your definition of a contrail versus a chemtrail. The word chemtrail is derived from the word contrail. So there's your definition. And then let's get into this, the actual resolution. Okay, the people of the town of Fairfax recognize that geoengineering engineers, okay, are spraying matter from jet planes, an activity which produces what are commonly referred to as chemtrails. 
Studies have shown that disbursements of stra stratospheric, aerosol, geoengineering, and other such programs contain toxic substances with many unknown health and environmental consequences. Did you read that? Okay, so they're talking about this um, aerosol geoengineering, and it has unknown health and environmental consequences, which is why they put this resolution out. And here it just kind of reiterates the health implications of these chemtrails. All right. And here they declared Fairfax to be a chemtrail free zone. I don't know about you, but I kind of want to move to Fairfax after this. <laughs> I wish mine would do the same. Anyhow, there is that information for you, and I'm going to leave a document. So that being said, hopefully... Uh, this is the proof some people needed. If not, God help you because you are a long way from where you need to be. Um, there's countless of other information and documentation. I can go five hours with proof on chemtrails alone and probably another five hours with proof on my control information. But if I show it to you in pieces and parts, at least you get the general gist. Anyhow, this is Lisa Haven signing off.